Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Before we begin today's webinar, Osteoporosis Canada acknowledges the land that our offices, located in Toronto or on, is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Awashnabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. My name is Tracy Napoli, and I'm the Director of Fund Development and Marcom at Osteoporosis Canada, and I will be your cooking demo host today. We also welcome those watching the live stream on Osteoporosis Canada's Facebook page. This webinar will provide general information about cooking and food knowledge. It is not intended as individualized health or nutrition advice. If you have questions about nutrition, consult a physician or registered dietitian. We would like to acknowledge this project is funded in part by the Government of Canada. Now, during the webinar, if you are watching on Zoom, you can enter questions by clicking the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Or if you are watching via Facebook, you can enter your comments in you can enter your questions in the comments section. We will do our best to answer questions within the time available. Nutrition is a key component for strengthening and maintaining healthy bones, as well as in the prevention and management of osteoporosis. Calcium, vitamin D, and protein are essential nutrients for proper bone health. For many people, including older adults, oftentimes people stop making meals with all the nutrients they need for good health, including bone health. Osteoporosis Canada is working to provide strategies, new ideas, and recipes to help you get the bone building nutrients needed to keep bones strong and healthy. So let's get cooking. Today's cooking demo featured recipe is turkey cranberry pot pie just in time for Thanksgiving. And this recipe per serving has 225 milligrams of calcium and 31 grams of protein. You can get this recipe along with others by visiting osteoporosis.ca forward slash recipes. I will also post the recipe link in the chat and in the comment section on Facebook. Please welcome our uh, cooking demo uh, host, Emily Richards, who is a professional home economist, freelance food writer, chef, and she is the author and co-author of 10 cookbooks. Emily also writes and develops recipes for print and online publications that include everyday cooking and healthy eating. And she can be found on TV, radio, and webcasts just like this one. Please welcome Emily. Thanks, Tracy. Hey, everybody. Happy lunchtime. <laughs> I hope you came with your appetite. I certainly did. Um, and it's one of kind of, I think, a lot of people's favorite time of year the, with the kind of crispness in the air wanting to cook kind of those comfort foods and with Canadian Thanksgiving right um, a few days away it's um, a fabulous time to get in the kitchen um, virtually today and hopefully you'll be cooking the rest of the week um, and weekend with family and friends and this recipe in particular is one of my favorites because it uses some of my favorite ingredients but it also has a make-ahead um, it has pastry, so many favorite things that I love um, to cook with, but also um, that I know maybe you'll be looking forward to um, as we look forward to celebrating on the weekend. Now, that said, it doesn't have to be just for Thanksgiving. Um, this is a turkey cranberry pot pie that can be made any time of the year because we are using lean ground turkey. It's a great source of protein and it's available year round. So it is a fabulous dish. You will find that this dish comes together really, really quickly um, because it's just done in a skillet and then we can pop it in the oven. Now I will be attentive today because I do have one in the oven that will be coming out nice and warm to show you as well. So as Tracy mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A or in the comments on Facebook Live. Happy to answer um, questions of what we're doing today. Um, or if you have any maybe Thanksgiving questions that you need to ask, um, make ahead mashed potatoes, lots of butter, lots of milk, um, maybe some cream cheese. That's kind of the big one that usually happens around this time of year. But let's get cooking. Um, I should start by making sure that my burner is going to work for me. And it is. Good start. So I've kind, kind of done some of the prep work already. And that really is kind of what takes 
maybe the most part um, uh, in time when we are cooking and in the kitchen. And in this one in particular, we want everything to be chopped in similar sized pieces. Um, because it is going to be, I'm giving you options here today, you can do individual pot pies or one large one. So it really depends on the size of the, the family you're cooking for, or if it's just a single or a couple that you're, that you're cooking for, for yourself and a partner, perhaps. So this is a fabulous, versatile recipe, and it is make ahead. So we can freeze it, which is even better, especially when we are planning ahead. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of canola oil because I do want to saute off some of my vegetables and build flavor right from the get-go. Um, I talked about the size of the vegetables. So here is where if you want to be very precise, your vegetables can be all the same size and very small. So I'll give you an example here. We are going to be using some basic um, staple, pantry staple vegetables, onion, garlic, celery, and carrots. I always have those in the crisper. They're a great base to so many soups, stews, and other dishes. You'll notice that everything's kind of chopped the same. I refer to it as a dice. So if you are not comfortable chopping things in a small manner, just chop them a little bit larger. Make sure they're all the same size so that they can cook evenly, because that's really the key here. Okay, so I'm going to start off. I'm just using this is a regular cooking onion that I'm adding, and my celery. I love celery. It is a vegetable that I add to stir fries and soup. Adds a nice little bit of crunch if you don't cook it all the way through, but it adds. It really does add some flavor. And carrots, which are going to add a little bit of sweetness, and of course our fresh garlic. We want to get that in there as well too. So a few cloves of garlic. And if you're a garlic lover like I am, a little extra garlic will go a long way as well. So we want to let this cook for a few minutes just to soften the vegetables. Okay. So I'll let that sit. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the turkey. So protein is something that we all need. Um, it gives us energy. It just fills us up. And it is a great um, part of our meals. So in this case, we're using ground turkey, which is available year round, and it is a lean protein. So it is very easy to find, usually in with all the other ground proteins. And it is something that typically is sold in a one pound package or 450 gram package. So we're gonna be using the whole package. Now, if you're thinking, I'm only two people at home, I don't need the whole package. I still want you to make the whole package because you're going to plan ahead. You're gonna have two that you might enjoy now, and then you're going to freeze two for later. So it, it does have that um, versatility. And ground proteins are fabulous because of their, the fact that they're so economical for us. So when we create meals, we don't necessarily, maybe this weekend, you don't feel like cooking a whole turkey. This is a great way to kind of still bring all those flavors and all the wonders of turkey during this time of year in a different way. Don't you think, Tracy? Do you look, I, I know you like turkey, so I think we're okay if I say I that. I do. Right? I love Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's actually my favorite, uh, one of my favorite holidays, and I love all the, the spices. It's just so simple, and it's delicious, but turkey is also, um, you know, it's versatile. If you like dark meat, right, you can use more dark meat. If you like light meat, it's whatever you want to do. Um, I did want to mention that we're going to do a bit of a giveaway the, the lovely apron that, that Emily is wearing, um, we are going to be giving away. If, you, if you've registered and you're, unfortunately it's just for Zoom people, if, you, if you've registered and you are still on the uh, webinar at the end, we will, um, I'll pull your name and I will send you the apron. And uh, that way you can cook along with us too with your, your apron in, in purple. But Emily, I'm just looking here really quickly. Let me just check, I think we have a question. So Emily, we have a question from Karen. So she says that she has a boneless turkey breast in the freezer. And could she use that if she diced it up instead of ground turkey? Yes, that's actually a great question. And I was gonna hit on that note because Tracy mentioned if you wanted to use all white or dark meat, because there is a preference when it comes to turkey in a lot of families. Um, in my house, we're divided almost in half. Um, but if you do have any boneless um, turkey meat available, you can dice it up and use it. You could chop it up again. It just be a chunkier pot pie. And if you do want something a little bit more fine, you could actually just cut it into bigger chunks and pulse it in your food processor. 
So just put a few pieces at a time, pulse it, take it out, and you'll get more of a fine mint if that's what you would like. But you could definitely use that boneless turkey breast for sure. And what I would do is the exact same process that we're going to be doing with the ground turkey, which is what I'm going to add now. So if you're using a boneless turkey breast, you would add it chopped up at this point as well, just when I'm adding the ground turkey, because I do still want to brown it and cook it fully. So this actually has a couple of make ahead um, in it. The fact that you can make the whole thing ahead is one great um, component of it, but you can also just make the filling ahead um, if you wanted to make it the night before and then just put the pastry on before you bake it. So I'm breaking up the ground turkey because I don't want to have kind of one big piece of the turkey. Anytime I'm using a ground protein, it's really important to break it up so that it's distributed, it's cooked evenly. Um, and in our case, because we're going to be making pot pie, I want it to be in a nice even size. So I'm just breaking it up with my spatula as I cook it. And this is where I'm going to add, Tracy mentioned it, those, you know, fall flavored herbs that we love, um, dried sage. That's the classic one for Thanksgiving and some dried thyme. Um, and we are using a tablespoon of dried sage and a teaspoon of dried thyme. Now, when I say dried thyme, I'm going to just spoon out my teaspoon of dried thyme and kind of show it to you here. These are thyme leaves. They're not ground thyme, okay? Um, which is a difference. This has um, a more herbaceous flavor. It's not quite as pungent as ground thyme, okay? And then I'm also going to use dried sage leaves again, okay? So I'm taking that tablespoon. And what I do with my sage leaves is I actually put them in my hand first and then rub them into the skillet, okay? I'll, I'll waft it your way, Tracy. I don't know if you'll be able to smell it. <laughs> Oh my God. I love sage, you know, and it's something where a lot of people maybe aren't familiar, familiar with it. So give it a try. Um, I mean, if you have fresh sage, that's even great. Um, but we actually, so we have another question, Emily, kind of on using, um, we are very much about strategies. We know not everyone is a really big fan of maybe cooking a lot or at all. And so the cook one eat, eat twice. So if you've made the turkey for Thanksgiving and you have leftover turkey, which is already cooked, Emily, could like could you use that? But you'd have to prepare it maybe a little bit differently since the, the meat's already cooked or not a good idea. What do you think? A little bit. Actually, I I'm like all for turkey leftovers. I always cook an, a bigger turkey than I need because I want leftovers. And sometimes I'm generous and I actually give leftovers to, you know, my mom when she comes. <laughs> It's only fair to share, right? Um, so if you are roasting that turkey this weekend, you can totally make, use this as a turkey pot pie with cooked turkey. So the same idea, I still wanna add those aromatic vegetables with the carrots, start with that process. Where I'm adding um, the ground turkey, you're still gonna add your turkey at that same point. What ends up happening is because the turkey's already roasted and, and it's got some flavor in it, you can do one of two things. You can reduce the amount of herbs, but why would you? Come on, we love it, it's delicious. Um, so you could change it up a little bit and just reduce the amount of sage and thyme, even by half, because you're still gonna have all that flavor from the roast turkey itself, especially if you put like an herb butter on it. Um, and you won't need to cook it as long. Obviously I'm cooking this for about five to eight minutes because I need to cook the turkey through. But you're adding cooked turkey, so you really just want to heat it up with the vegetables and get some of those flavors in it. So, and by flavors, I mean that sage and thyme in there, okay? Um, so definitely, that's a great idea. This is a great way to use up some of those turkey leftovers after this weekend. And again, don't think that you still be able to freeze it um, after you've cooked it and prepared it. So, you know, kudos to you if you're planning ahead, because I think that is, a great goal. And a lot of people get really frustrated because, you know, they, they think, oh, I'm going to have all this turkey. What am I going to do with it? So if you start thinking about that now, you know, come Monday, if you're not celebrating Thanksgiving on Monday and you have some time off, great time to whip up some of these dishes and tuck them into the freezer because you still have a few more months till 20. <laughs> 21 to get through. And it's great to kind of pull up that, pull out those freezer meals when you don't feel like cooking. 
I'm a big fan about freezing everything because you know what, again, it's the whole, like what pieces can you freeze? Well, I mean, if you make this in pieces, you can freeze it. If you assemble it and you cool it correctly and then you freeze it, it's like the best part to have like dig through the freezer and you're like, what am I gonna do for dinner? Um, you know, on a weekend or on a Tuesday night. And there you go, it's already made. And I know Emily, she's just checking on the lovely, the big one that she's made the, the single serving for a group. How does it look, Emily? It looks so delicious. I just have to take it out and I'm gonna, I'll show it to you later. I'm just gonna, it's extremely bubbly. Okay. <laughs> so I had to be very careful taking it out, but you can see it kind of on the back counter there. It's just that um, that red dish. I made one large one because that's one of the uh, the options here. But I don't okay. want to forget about our turkey. And I agree with you, Tracy. I think freezing and having those things um, ready to pull out, you just it just feels like a great day when you don't want to cook and you just pull something out, warm it up, and it's ready to go. All right. So we are going to add our flour. So we are kind of creating a gravy right in the skillet itself, okay? So I'm just using about a quarter of a cup of all-purpose flour, okay? Now, I know the questions will start to happen, Tracy. Um, what if I'm gluten-free? What do I use? Yes, yes that's a great <laughs> question. We do, we have a lot of people who, who ask us about gluten-free options. What is that option? So what you're gonna do is, you're actually not gonna add the flour, obviously, um, but you will add your milk to your um, mixture. So let's start with the flour first. So if you're adding your flour, you wanna stir this up so that you basically don't see any flour in the mixture anymore, okay? So it doesn't take very long. It's just getting absorbed into the turkey and the vegetables, okay? And then I'm going to add my cup and a half of milk. I'm just using 2% milk, okay? Um, you can use skim or whole milk, whatever you happen to have at home. And this is where our calcium packs the punch, right? We have milk in here, but not only that, it's adding a really nice creaminess to it without using cream. And on top of that, it's kind of like creating a gravy. Um, so that's why we're doing this process here. And I'm also going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. So let's talk no flour. If you're not using flour, you're going to add your milk in here, and then you're gonna to whisk together a tablespoon of cornstarch with a tablespoon of water. Or you can just hold back a tablespoon of milk and whisk that together, and you're gonna stir that in there, okay? And it really only needs to cook for about a minute. It'll start to thicken, but it's not that super thick um, texture that we're looking for. We just want it to be slightly thickened so that we get that gravy-like texture in our pot pie when we go to bake it. Okay, now remember there's pastry on here. So if you do um, want to avoid gluten, you're gonna have to look for a gluten-free pastry or make your own gluten-free pastry, okay? So here, I don't have any gluten allergies at my house, so we are going full gluten here, um, pastry and flour in the mix. But I know um, from speaking to friends that have um, gluten allergies or gluten-free fam family members, there are some great, um, gluten-free pastry that are available, whether it's a puff or pie pastry. Sometimes it's in a mix that you just add water to, um, and other times it is just a frozen product. So that's based on availability. Um, so you could always call specialty stores and find out what they have. Oftentimes it's a little bit more difficult to find it in a regular grocery store, but if you're willing to, to make some pastry, because maybe you're making pumpkin pie um, this weekend, you could just make an extra paste, a little bit of extra pastry for your pot pie. So I hope that answers the gluten question, Tracy. Yes, it does. No, as always, that's a great answer. Now let's talk about the milk component. So you used, it was 2%, right? I did, yes. I used 2% okay. in here. So if you use, you had skim, is that like, do you need the fat component? Is that gonna change if you use skim or if you wanted to use an alternative fortified beverage? How would that work, do you think? So you can definitely use skim, uh, skim milk if that's what you have at home. Um, it ends up being not quite as creamy, obviously, because of the reduced fat in the skim milk, but it still produces, and you can see here in the pan, it's not super thick, 
but it does give you that consistency that you're looking for when it comes to gravy. You can also use a fortified beverage as well here in the same, in the exact same manner. So whether it's gluten-free or not, you're gonna do the same process where you're gonna add the flour, you're gonna add the fortified beverage and then cook it till it's thickened. It does, again, it doesn't have that creaminess that a 2% or whole milk would, will have, but it will still give you that gravy-like texture which is, I think, one of the reasons why people love pot pie, because it has all, it's, it's the whole meal in one, really. <laughs> it's, in our case, it's going to be cranberry sauce, gravy, turkey. The only thing we're not having is mashed potatoes, but we're covering that with our own starch and using the pastry. I will add, though, if you do have some leftover potatoes, whether they're mashed or roasted, you can actually chop some up. I would add about a half a cup or a cup, and you can stir it right in here. Okay, so you can really have the whole meal in one, or if you want to, instead of pastry, um, you could just top them with mashed potatoes and bake them. Okay, so there's another option. We didn't think of that earlier, Tracy. We could have done a no. whole other version. I know, I know. Shh, wait, we can have a whole other webinar on that. But no, but really, what the, the great part about this, and this is what we're trying to do, we want people to make food first choices for bone building nutrients, and we want you to you know, get in the kitchen, but we don't want you to have to like sweat over a stove, like for hours and hours. And these are such great alternative su suggestions. I mean, that's almost kind of like a, a, a Thanksgiving shepherd's pie. Okay. Let's think about that, Emily. We'll do the, the next recipe where that's what we're going to do. <laughs> we we're going to think about that. So, I mean, but there, we want versatility because we know people um, will be like, well, I wanted to make it, but I didn't want to make my own crust or I didn't have it in the freezer and all of that. So, um, but yeah, I, I, the mashed potato idea is a great idea. Well, and I think that's what's great about um, cooking classes in general. Obviously in person, when we get back to that, it's yes. awesome virtually and these webinars, it's really about having that discussion of what people have at home and what um, they can, you know, change up as needed. If you don't have celery, that doesn't mean you don't have to make this recipe. You can still add the carrots. You could add some extra onion if you want for flavor. So, and you have to be at that comfort level where you can kind of open the fridge and kind of discover what you have to create these dishes. This is a nice basic start because you can kind of now, I want you to all sit there and think, oh, I have peppers, I have zucchini. What if I use zucchini and peppers in my turkey pot pie? There's no reason, there's no, there's no wrong to that at all because you're still getting the benefit of your vegetables and you're still getting the protein um, in there as well. So it's a great combination. We're going to go the extra mile and add even more flavor and vegetables with the cranberry component. We're actually doing a double cranberry here. And again, if you don't have both, not to worry, one or the other works. Um, and if you don't have homemade cranberry sauce, um, you can use store-bought cranberry sauce. I would recommend for this, I am going to add the cranberry sauce, the whole berry cranberry sauce. So it has the bigger pieces in it. It's a little bit chunkier. Um, you can still see it has some liquid in there that's all good because we really want this to be nice and moist and bubbly as a pot pie. That's really important. So I'm going to add that. That's a half a cup going in. Okay. So that's going to, I love cranberry sauce and gravy. So for me, this dish is like the ultimate. Um, and I love cranberries. So we're going to add some dried cranberries as well. Okay. So that's going to add some nice color because we've got, we have to remember we eat with our eyes as well. So we want it to look great. Um, and this adds a nice little bit of texture. It will soften, but that little kind of, it's almost just like a tender chew from the um, cranberries in there, which is lovely. And then I'm big on color. Not everybody loves peas, but peas are fabulous for color and they're always in my freezer. So they go in there as well. You could use a mixed vegetable here as well. Um, if you wanted a brighter herb, and by brighter herb, I mean, in color and then just the fresher flavor, you could add chopped parsley in here as well, okay? Um, I don't need to add any more fresh sage or fresh thyme here because I've added it in the beginning to kind of cook that flavor in. Um, that said, Tracy did mention earlier about having, you know, if you had fresh sage, you could definitely use fresh herbs instead of the dried that I use. The general rule of thumb for that is three to one. So I've called for one tablespoon of dried sage leaves you'll use three tablespoons of fresh sage leaves chopped up, okay? Because they just have, they need that little bit of a bigger flavor when they're fresh like that. So this is 
or fill it. I'm not so kind of pretty, Emily. It's so colorful. That looks um, so I, I believe it's called, pretty. It's, it's called jewel tones, I believe, <laughs> when the cranberries are in there. So you don't have to go in there and, you know, really stir this up because we want to see the, the beautiful color of it. And you can make this part ahead. So let's say I'm having guests tomorrow night. Wednesday night, I decided I'm going to have my aunt and my cousin come over for dinner. And I don't, I want this out of the way so that I can, you know, keep the oven for pie tomorrow night. So I can make this today, put it in the fridge. I don't have to worry about the pastry. And then tomorrow I can just put the pastry on and bake it. Okay. So this is our one make ahead here. If you wanted to, you could take this and freeze it and pull it out later. If you didn't want to put the pastry on, you could totally do that as well. Okay. So I'm going to do um, the individual pot pies here because this is where it becomes a very versatile recipe for smaller households. Okay. So whether you're cooking for one or two, this is where you're going to pull out. I don't know how many of you make French onion soup. I make it like twice a year, <laughs> but I have these lovely French onion soup bowls that I love to use. Um, so these are the perfect vehicle for pot pies, but you could also use just larger ramekins. Um, and if you don't want this as a large serving, so this is going to be your dinner. So this is, you know, these are a generous one cup serving. You could use smaller ramekins and serve it alongside something else. So let's say you were serving squash soup or a lovely salad for your Thanksgiving dinner, you could just use a smaller ramekin and you'll get a few more pot pies. So if you're having six or eight, for example, you can just um, share it <laughs> in a smaller portion. All right, I'm just gonna grab a spoon here. And if you want, you can use a little um, cooking spray inside um, your little ramekin, but you don't have to. I always soak mine after anyway to clean them. So, but you can definitely do that. And I'm just going to divide this up. So you want to let this cool a little bit um, before you put the pastry on. But I find by the time I divide up the, the filling, um, it usually is cooled enough that the pastry won't kind of steam on the bottom. That tends to be the issue oftentimes is that when we put that pastry on, we get that pocket of steam. So we definitely don't want that. And I'm not packing it down. I'm just kind of letting it fall wherever it lays. And I'm trying to get it nice and even. There we are, I think. And you can still see that nice creaminess from the milk that we added. All right, I think I've got it all in there. All right. so. If you're going to do that make ahead with just the filling, you could also just cover these, tuck them in the fridge, and then come back the next day and get them ready to bake. I'm not gonna make you make pastry. If you wanna make pastry, you can make pastry. I love making pastry. I made some on the weekend. I made half a dozen pies and it was the best Sunday of, of my life for a while. Um, and I know not everybody enjoys making pastry. So you can purchase pastry. You can buy pie pastry, you can buy puff pastry, whatever you like. Um, I'm just, this is just some uh, store-bought pie pastry that um, typically comes in a circle. So what I did, and you can actually see what I did here, I kind of broke it apart and made it a little bit more into a square. Why? These are circles. Why did I make this into a square? Because I like to be different. <laughs> I actually like cutting the pastry in squares to put it on top so that it just has a nice, um, feel to it, but you can cut it to fit the actual ramekin um, if you wanted to, but I'm going to do little squares here. So I did roll it out a little bit uh, more. It's about a quarter of an inch um, thick, so it's not a really heavy pastry. If you are using puff pastry um, and you buy the sheet, you only need one sheet. You can just unroll it and cut it into four pieces and put it right onto your um, onto your little ramekin. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna kind of cut this into four. Whoops, They're not perfect squares, but they will work. Move this over and bring this back down here. Okay. 
And then I'm just going to kind of sit it on top like this. Okay. Now, if you don't like it like that, you can also tuck in the edges like this and just kind of push it down. That'll give you more of a wrinkly top, okay? Or you can just fold in the edges like that. But I really just like putting it right on top like that because as it cooks, it kind of sinks down a little bit and um, you'll see it bubble up a little bit. Now you can just pop this in the oven, but I do recommend that you put a little vent hole in it because this is some hot stuff that needs to um, evaporate a little bit and it's gonna bubble up. So just with a little paring knife, you can do a little slit in the top, okay? Or just kind of do some pokes whatever works for you. And this can go right into the oven, but if you want that extra little glaze on top, you're just gonna take an egg with a little bit of milk or water and brush it right over top. Okay, and that will just give you that little extra golden color. Now I should mention, you should have your oven preheated for this <laughs> so that you can put it right into the oven, okay? so that it will bake up. And really all we need to do, because our filling is cooked, is get that crust nice and golden. And the oven temperature is 400. And that will cover you both for the pastry. So whether you're using um, pie pastry or puff pastry, you'll still get um, a really nice golden color. And with the puff pastry, you'll get that little bit of puff as well, which is really nice. So I'm just gonna pop these into the oven. I'm gonna put them down low. And then they are gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes. And I'm gonna show you what my big one looks like. Just gonna bring it over and it's all. Now I do recommend that you put, you can probably see all the little drippies along the side here. Put it on a baking sheet. <laughs> Just like I put those on a baking sheet. Trust me on this one. If you don't, I guarantee you it's going to bubble over and then you're going to send me an email and say, Emily, you should have told me to put a baking sheet underneath. So I'm telling you now, put a baking sheet underneath. Um, it, it, it'll save your oven. Trust me on this one. Um, and then you're going to get this lovely golden brown color on top. But obviously that bubbliness that's going to happen, which is what I love about uh, pot pies, is that nice creaminess that happens. And that's our gravy. Okay. I'm gonna get a plate because I know you wanna see what it looks like inside, right, Tracy? We do, and we always like you to have because none of us, we, we can't smell it, we can just see it, we can't taste it. So you're gonna be our official taste tester, although it, it does look really, really good. And while you do that, I wanted to kind of also talk a little bit about, because we, we had chatted with some of our, um, our volunteers and the people who, who watch our cooking demos about, you know, why they like to cook or if they don't like to cook or, you know, how we can encourage more people to, to, you know, make good choices about, you know, using these recipes and, and whatnot and budget came up. And I just want to talk a little bit about budget because we've done a few cooking demos where we talk about things like pantry staples and freezer staples. And, you know, when you go to the market and if you see something on sale, like ground turkey, you could, you know, buy that on that trip buy one or two, pop it in the freezer. Same thing with the pie crust, peas, always in the freezer. I mean, a lot of the ingredients are really in the freezer. So at, you know, each time you go you, one trip, you buy maybe one extra item. Um, and then as you make it, like you said, if you're only making it for one or two, you've now made another meal for another day. So didn't want to just touch on that, but that, uh, this is definitely, I think, a, a budget friendly and freezer friendly and um, Thanksgiving, no stress friendly meal. So it is totally. Good. And I think sometimes we think, you know, when we think of holidays um, in particular, we think, you know, everything has to be on the large side. Um, and, and we have to be realistic that not all households are large. So if, you know, doing something like this, it still gives you all the aromas of Thanksgiving. We have all the flavors. We're using all the ingredients just in a different way. Um, and in this case, you could do a couple of these 
um, whether you do the whole pie or the individuals like I have in the oven, what's great about that is that once this is completely cooled, I can wrap this really well, tuck it in the freezer. Um, and if I'm doubling up, maybe I'm making one for my family and one for you know, a friend that's not well or someone that just had a baby, those types of things. It's just a, a whole meal that you can take out and you know, do a porch drop off or those types of things. Or for you yourself, if you have four that you're making, but you're just going to eat one, the other three can be tucked away in the freezer. The one thing that I get questions about when it's dishes like this is what do I serve with it? Because really everything is in there. We have our starch, we have our vegetables, we have our protein, we have our gravy, we have everything in there. So what do you serve it with? This is something where I go with the season. And right now, if you haven't seen any squash, you haven't been outside. <laughs> um, there's squash everywhere. And whether it's you know just roasting some acorn squash or spaghetti squash or butternut squash, a nice little, you know, roasted squash side dish would be perfect with this just because of the flavor and the combination. You don't have to go overboard, but it kind of gives you that potatoes that you may feel that you're missing. Um, but it's also another vegetable and it's totally in season, which is really nice. So um, and the color works, which is always a nice one, too. All right, I'm going to kind of break into this. and Scoop some out. And I will let you know, I did not use cooking spray in this pan either. So um, I will try to scoop it out as best I can. It is good to let it sit for a little bit, but you can see all that nice creaminess of the gravy there that you're gonna go back in. I'll just kind of scoop that out like that, okay? And you can see even after it's cooked a little bit, you still have all that lovely creaminess coming out, that gravy, if you will, from that milk and flour combination that we've used in here. Plus we have the flavor all the way throughout with the cranberry sauce that adds that moisture too, which is really nice. I guess I should get a fork, Tracy. Well, you go ahead and while you, you taste that and you're gonna let us know how it is, I'm going to let everyone know who, uh, who won the apron, who, who's gonna get their unbreakable purple apron. But actually we're gonna wait, you taste that Emily, cause that looks good. I love it. And I will let you in on a secret. I actually made this filling yesterday so that I could just put the pastry on and pop it in as we got going um, today. So it sat beautifully. It's heated all the way through. Um, if you are worried that it's not going to be hot throughout, you can always warm it up a little bit before you put the pastry on. But it's absolutely delicious. I wish it was lunchtime. Oh, wait, it I is. know. Oh, wait, it is. I know. This is great. <laughs> this is great. No, that's wonderful. Emily, that looks so great. And we're so um, with all the information you've given us, I'm going to let let's see. So we have the person who's going to be getting this lovely apron is Lorraine Kwan, and she's from Toronto. So Lorraine, congratulations. I've got your information. I'm going to reach out and we're going to pop this in the mail for you so that hopefully you can try this recipe at home and uh and enjoy so i've got some other information that we just want to share before we wrap up so first off thank you to emily i'm just going to share my screen let's just do that you're welcome oops sorry that shouldn't have come up <laughs> oh boy don't we love technology so <laughs> you're welcome maureen thank you maureen sent in a thanks so we want you to um, visit our new website. Have you seen Osteoporosis Canada's new website? It launched uh, just over a month ago and you can still find great tools and resources to help you um, get the information that you, that you need. So you can calculate your calcium. You can listen to podcasts, um, which are great. So Unbreakable, the OC podcast, this webinar will have been, it's been recorded and it will appear on the OC Replay webpage along with lots of other uh, webinars that we've recorded um, on all different topics. So definitely check that out. This webinar will be available within the next 48 hours. You've also got the Know Your Risk quiz. But the really exciting thing that we would like um, to talk to you about is the Cook Along program. So this is a cooking demo where we've all, been able to log on and watch, but we started this program in 2020 and we did it in Winnipeg, Manitoba. 
And it was really successful, especially when COVID happened. It was the way that we could all connect. And Emily does a virtual cooking class. And so it was so successful, we've decided to try it out in a different province. So we're going to be doing it in different uh, locations in Ontario so that we can reach more people. So if you're interested, you can just visit osteoporosis.ca forward slash cook along and you can sign up to get notified. So the next one we have coming up is a fast fry steak and eggs recipe. That's November 2nd. And that'll be at 5 p.m. Eastern if you live in Guelph. Um, and what happens is you register, you pay a $15 fee, and the groceries for that cook-along are delivered to the registrant. And there's a cap on that. So the grocery delivery is by Longo. It's delivered by Grocery Gateway. And that one is sponsored by thinkbeef.ca. And then we will have one at the end of November uh, for Kitchener, as you can see. Um, We'll have another one in March. We'll have two in March, one in St. Catharines. And as I move my screen over so I can see in another one in Burlington. And so these are the recipes that we've um, selected. We will also be doing a fifth one. Um, we're hoping for Hamilton and we will be um, developing another recipe for that one. So visit this webpage, uh, sign up if you live in those areas. And, and the reason is um, you, that's for the delivery of the groceries. So unfortunately, to participate as a virtual cooking student, you do need to um, actually live in the area and you'll get more information on the webpage. And also everyone will get uh, a lovely purple apron that they can wear with Emily. Now, if you don't live in those areas, not a problem because you can just register to watch along with the rest of us. Doesn't matter where you're located and we can see Emily um, teach about all different kinds of strategies, ways to make, you know, uh, old old classics that are revamped, like instead of a tuna noodle casserole, it's a salmon noodle casserole and other recipes. So we're very excited about this and we hope that you will join us. We're gonna see here about some, let me just do that. So this is the new website. You can also at the very top right-hand corner, subscribe to our newsletter. And that way you can get information. Um, I just got a message that the link to the recipe, um, there was an issue with the link that was posted, not to worry. Everyone who's registered will be receiving a follow-up email with a, the replay um, webinar, the re recorded webinar, and also a link to the recipe. So you'll also be getting that directly. But uh, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And before we go, Emily, again, thank you very much. And I hope all of you, I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you all stay well and um, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.